Lab Code Agents, we're live to you this time through YouTube instead of Facebook Live. So let's give that a shot. Today we were having some issues with Facebook and Zoom connection, but we're still going to make it happen. And we're talking about how to create a million dollar real estate agent with someone that is, if you don't know this guy, you haven't been in the business. It's Craig Proctor. He's not only the father of the way that we do business in real estate, but the guy's, the guy's an absolute genius, brilliant man, and brilliant businessman. So you've got to listen to what Craig's going to talk about today. Craig, thank you for- You're, you're, making, uh, you're making me blush. Dude, you're, dude you're, you're, you're a legend. You're a living legend. And I don't, I don't think I've ever used that, that phrase on anybody I've ever interviewed. So that you are, my friend. Well, I appreciate uh, you having me here today. Um, you know, I, uh, we were talking, oh, I was in Santa Monica a few months ago, and I, I've heard all about Tristan. I'm like, I want to meet this guy. I want to meet this guy. But you, to meet Tristan, you got to go through his people, man. You, the people. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I'm glad that we're uh, doing this uh, today, and uh, you're, uh, you're doing a great job here. Uh, 100, 000, over 100,000 people in your group. That's amazing. Yeah, dude. And it all started uh, very similar to the way you do it, which is you, you care. That's one thing that's very different about you. And we care. We just want to help people grow, agents grow. And, and it's, the same, it's the same philosophy you do, man. Yeah. Same thing. No, so, I love it. Uh, 25 years later, I, I still love it. I love getting up every morning. I, I find it, uh, you know, it, what's challenging uh, today more than ever is how fast things are changing. And, and so... Um, you know, uh, you got to embrace change and uh, it's, there's so much money to be made in real estate. You know, I mean, of all, Tristan, of all the things that we, we could have got into, I mean, I went to university and I didn't finish, but I kept in touch with the guys that uh, did complete university and, uh, you know, they're making a uh, hundred, $150,000 a year. And uh, I was, uh, um, probably least likely to succeed. I think uh, my roommates would have said at that point. So I, I guess I kind of failed my way to success here. And, and uh, you know, real estate uh, can be wonderful if it's done right, but it can be, as you know, a horrible business if uh, you uh, don't do this the right way. I agree, man. It's a, it's a very challenging, it's a very challenging endeavor because most people that get into real estate come into it as a second, third, fourth, fifth career. Yeah, because, yep. yeah. And, and so a lot of us that come in don't have that business mentality. So uh, I'll, tell, I'll tell everybody what I told you a little bit ago. When I came into the business in 04, it was pretty easy. Everyone could get a loan. You know, you heard yeah. the story, the Pulse. Mm -hmm. If you had a Pulse, you could buy. And so the, the market shifted for me in 06, 07. And I was like, whoa, what the hell am I going to do? And one of my friends, his name is Hector Diaz, he handed me a PDF and it, it showed you how to post on Craigslist and get leads from it. And it happened to be by you, Craig Proctor. A and lot of so people like, thought I invented Craigslist back then. Dude, you know what? I <laughs> thought you did too. I'm like, is this, wait, is this connected to, that's hilarious that that happened because it just happened that way. And so that night I said, I've got to do this. I don't want to be left behind in this shifting market because I don't have REOs. I didn't have anything like that. Right. So I applied exactly what you said to do, like step by step. And the next day I had people inquiring and asking to see homes. And I was like, no way. This is, That's cool. This is That's crazy. Cool. And that got me through 06, 07, 08, and 09 because I learned all about the online leads and I had to shift. I had to be able to adjust and respond quickly. Right. Dude, I modeled my whole business off of that. And uh, thank you for that. Hey, you're very welcome. Um, I, I love it. I get up every day. I love what I do uh, still after all these years. And uh, it's these stories that I hear from uh, guys like you that, that um, it impacted them. And that's great. I mean, I feel really fortunate that I was able to find something that I love. Uh, because like a lot of this, um, you know, uh, that wasn't happening for me when I was younger. I would, you know, I went to college for a year. I dropped out. I went to university for a year. I went, I tried different things. Um, deep down, I kind of had this feeling I was going to be successful. But um, at that point, I had no idea how that was going to happen. And uh, by luck or chance, my father was a realtor. And wow. so I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into real estate. Uh, I'm going to try this. And my dad actually discouraged me. He says, I, like, 
don't do this. I go, but why? You want to get me out of the house, right? He goes, yeah, but, <laughs> but um, he goes, uh, first of all, you're not very good at sticking with anything, you know, dropping out of college, university, uh, in and out of jobs. He says, you have no sales experience, you know, you have no marketing experience. Like, really, uh, what chance do you have? Just save your money and go get a job. A lot of, like a lot of young guys, I did the opposite of what dad uh, uh, told me to do. I got into real estate and uh, I had no option. I had to succeed. I mean, I was at that point, I was 25 years old living it with my parents. Um, started real estate um, in 1988. And three years later, wow. I was the top Remax agent in the world. Here's the crazy part. I was still living at home with my parents. Oh, dude, imagine all that money you saved. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. All that money. worst mistake I ever made leaving home. But uh, that's a true story. Um, <laughs> I, I, and back then, uh, Tristan, it was just like what cracked the code for me, uh, which you just mentioned, was direct response marketing. You know, uh, my dad, once I made that decision to get into real estate, he's like, OK, he's going to do it. I'll help him. I'll, I'll give him uh, all, the, all the support I can. But, you know, my dad, who had been in real estate since the 1970s, um, was, was telling me, you know, to go knock on doors and make cold calls and open houses. He did the best he could with what he knew. But um, what changed it for me is I, uh, I attended a seminar in Los Angeles uh, in late 1980s. And that's where I learned about direct response marketing. And, what and, seminar was that? Do you remember? Yes. Uh, there was a couple of them I went to. Uh, one was a Dan Kennedy seminar. Oh, wow. And, yeah. And, and this guy... Like, you know, my, my mind uh, was blown away w w with what he was saying, uh, that there were entire industries outside of real estate where they sold gazillions of dollars of products and services and no cold calls were ever made. Exactly. Like, I, I hate cold calling. Uh, <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to go back and I'm going to do this. And, and that's exactly what I did. So really, um, I go from in one year, as dumb as a pile of rocks, uh, struggling to, uh, to, to being very successful. And I got to the point where um, I could not go out on all the appointments. It's, I, 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 and remember, I'm a young guy. I'm Dude. living at home. I've got no wife. I have no kids. I'm working all the time. So for a guy like me that's never had money, and this, I remember my first commission check was $14,000. I'm like, <laughs> Dude, I worked all last year at the cleaning floors for $14,000. So, so I'm out there uh, you know, working day and night, and, and, but that only gets you so far. And I was completely burnt out a couple years into this because I was just trading my time for money. And we all know what's wrong with that strategy. Eventually, you have no more time to give. And so I'm now making money, but I have no life. <laughs> and, and, and so, uh, you know, uh, one problem uh, creates another problem. So now mm -hmm. I cracked the code on lead generation. That's when the team stuff helped, happened. That's funny because you created that whole model, the whole Craigslist model, the whole team model, right? Uh, I don't think there were any teams the way they are now until you said, hey, why, why don't I just create like a mini brokerage in a brokerage? That's exactly right. Uh, I don't know of any real estate agent in the United States or Canada uh, where the agent had licensed agents working for them. Brokers had licensed agents, of course, but uh, that's not something that real estate agents did. Uh, but it, it kind of made sense to me because... I had so much business coming in. I couldn't go out in all the appointments. So um, here I am at a, I'm at a, this is a true story. I got to the point where on the weekends, like a Saturday or Sunday, I would list six or seven homes each day. Like literally, uh, Tristan, I'm talking about going from appointment to appointment to appointment to appointment. By 1991, I was making myself physically sick, ill mm. on real estate. Um, I remember, uh, you know, getting to the point where the sellers were asking me, hey, man, are you okay? It was sort oh. of, uh, yeah, like I was just uh, completely burnt out. And I met a lady uh, who was representing the, the, the buyer. Her name was Lindy Black. And uh, she was the agent representing the buyer. It was my listing. We get the offer accepted. And we're out in the driveway just talking. And she says the same thing. You don't look so good. So I'm a guy. I like to complain. I'm saying, well, you know, I've sort of cracked the code on marketing. But I cannot go out on all the appointments. Now, it takes a woman to figure this out. She says, well, why don't I just come and work with you? She was less than a year in real estate. She came and worked with me. I gave her all the buyers and I hogged the sellers in the beginning. So <laughs> I just, uh, I said, to Lindy's like, what do I do? I'm new in the business. And I'm like, okay, well, here's what I do when I work with buyers. So she shadows me for a couple of weeks okay. and she's pretty good. 
she starts to get the same results that I'm getting if I was to work with the buyer. And I'm thinking, I'm free. I don't need to work with buyers. So I'm just sitting around thinking of what I can give Lindy Black to do all day long. And uh, then I, I, I started giving her the sellers. That first year that she worked with me, now mm -hmm. remember, this is back in the early 1990s, she made $250,000 for her. So $500,000 with two fifty dollars each. That was big money back then, right? That is. Yeah, and uh, so she was with me, uh, do the math here, for over 20 years. Wow. So, um, so she made me millions of dollars. And then uh, as soon as I found Lindy, I'm like, okay, these people exist. And I hired Frank and I hired the next one. And so I had a team pretty soon of uh, anywhere between eight to 10 outside sales agents. And my new job became not Craig, the real estate agent running out uh, on, a, on listing appointments. I became the marketer guy. My new mission was to get appointments for my agents. Got it. So I go up, um, I, I did about 150 transactions working for myself, driving myself crazy. Within 24 months, I'm doing over 500 transactions a year. Oh, damn. And, and it had very little to do with me. And that explains my longevity. That's why I was able to do this. I was one of the top Remax agent, either the top guy or one of the top four or five for 22 years straight because I made it easy. And that's really my, uh, the, the message I want to pass on today is, if reaching your goals, if you're killing yourself to reach your goals, um, then you, you need some help in getting your business organized so you can reach your goals easily. Because if you really have to push yourself to do it, you're probably not going to be able to replicate that goal. And I wanted to go beyond replicating it. I wanted to blow this up. So, okay, within five years, there's 55, the, the Remax office in my town is a two-story office. Mm -hmm. So I've got the second, the second story with uh, my team of uh, eight to 10 people. We were selling more homes than the 55 Remax agents on the main floor. Now, remember, I'm only in real, I'm only in real estate for a few years, right? Uh, but nobody had seen, uh, you know, nobody had seen the marketing part of it before. That was really like, what's this guy doing? How is he doing it? And it's not that I'm a super salesperson. Uh, it's just, I had so many great leads. I was able to get great results. And, um, I was, able to, I was able to create this system where I could plug other people into it and they were getting incredible results. So the outside sales agents I hired, they didn't leave me. Uh, most of them stayed with me for 15 or 20 years because they were making, you know, back in the 1990s, if you made, if you netted in your pocket a quarter million dollars a year, that was huge money. Yeah, dude, that's- yeah, a, so, uh, so that's how the whole, the whole team thing uh, e evolved. And uh, then, we, well, then we created inside sales agents. Because I found giving the leads, giving the leads to the agents didn't work as well as having a dedicated inside sales agent to call the leads. So I've mentioned Lindy Black. Um, I would, she was a good agent, new in the business, good agent, uh, but she listened. I was able to train her and mold her. Uh, but if I gave her the leads, because she was so good, if I gave her 10 leads, she would call two or three of them, get an appointment, and boom, she'd be out the door working with a buyer or seller. So um, I soon discovered what my outside sales agents really wanted were appointments, not leads. And that's when I started with inside sales agents. Um, first dude I hired, okay, was, uh, was a professional telemarketer. He worked for AAA, mm -hmm. right? Um, in Canada, it's called CAA, but same deal. But he was a telemarketer. Well, they had let all their telemarketers go and he got into real estate. I'm thinking, oh my God. This guy's a professional telemarketer who now has his real estate license. <laughs> Boom, you're hired. And um, we ended up, uh, we had four inside sales agents just pumping out the appointments. Uh, so um, I became a real student of direct response marketing. That's, that's really what changed everything for me. That makes sense, man. So now we're, we're talking about how to create a million dollar real estate business, but things have changed a little bit like they always do, right? You've been able to adjust now that Zillow's, in here, Open Door, Redfin, all these companies, how would you suggest that agents coming into the business now or having that goal, where do you suggest that they start? Well, look, um, the obvious thing to do is find people that are more successful than you are wherever you've got to go to meet them and you model after them. You know, you, you copy, you don't need, everything that you want to do in real estate is already being done by other people. So uh, 
whether it's me or Tristan or whoever you, fall, you, you, you need to lock in with somebody that is successful because they have a system, they have a routine, there's things that they do that cause their massive success. Um, I had Gary Keller speak at one of my events and he said, um, when he started Keller Williams, he goes, um, I didn't have the, the arrogance of thinking I was going to uh, reinvent this. I just looked at successful people and I modeled after them. He goes, um, you, you know, uh, he, call, he, he called me the king of lead generation, the real estate king of lead generation. I remember that, wow. which, is, which is a great, uh, was a great compliment. Yeah. But he said, um, uh, you know, when it, it came to what they were doing with maps, uh, uh, that they just, they just modeled after what the most successful agents are doing. And, and uh, that's what I did. That made total sense to me is find somebody that's successfully doing the thing that you want to do and learn exactly, not copy, but model after them, make it yours. But um, there are systems out there that uh, are duplicatable. Uh, you know, everything that I did at the time, by the way, even though it wasn't done in being done in real estate, a mm. lot of my innovations, Tristan, came from, uh, came from industries outside of real estate. Mm. So stuff that is called normal in other industries, I, I just took those ideas and applied them um, into real estate, like inside sales. They have inside sales in other industries. It just it didn't exist in real estate. All right. So you're saying if, if you have a plan to make a million in a year, first, you need the right model, right? Or the right systems to be able to follow. I know that that you offer, you offer a quantum, it's called... Remote. We call it the, the Quantum Leap Real Estate Success System. You got it. You see, when I started, when I started, uh, I never wanted to get in. I had no desire to be a real estate coach or trainer. I was a, just a very successful agent. I was happy with that. But agents were coming to me uh, wanting to know, how are you doing this? Because uh, remember, I'm in my 20s. I've just been named the top REMAX agent in the world. I'm only 36 months into this. People <laughs> are like, how the hell, how is he doing this? Right. So they would pay me to come and shadow me. But here's when I knew I was on to something. The agents that would come and spend a day with me, they were going back to their marketplaces and they were starting to get the exact same results that I was getting. That's when I knew my success had nothing to do with Craig Proctor. The person had everything to do with the systematic way I was doing this. That's what we teach agents today is the systematic way to generate leads. There, is, there are better systems, better methods to generate leads. And then how do I reach the prospects? What do I say? What about the listing? You know, so everything's a system. So then if I'm, I'm going to do this, let's say I'm, I'm starting off where I just want to reboot my business. What systems do I start off with? So I start off right. Give me some like deep examples here. I will break this down in very specifics. Number one thing you need is a lead generation system. You need a reliable, inexpensive, automated way to generate leads. It doesn't depend on you cold calling, door knocking. If you're away for a week on vacation, while you're sleeping, uh, while you're playing with your kids, the leads are coming in. Okay. If you want to grow, this sounds basic, but if you want to grow your business, you have to have an abundance of it, yeah. right? If you want to grow your business, you must have an abundance of it. So that's the first nut you have to crack is you need to learn uh, effective lead generation. You need to learn, first of all, who's your target market going to be? So where you live, Tristan, within a 20-mile radius, there are some buyers and sellers that would be a way better fit for you than other buyers and sellers. You figured that out. So now we know the target market. We know where the sales are that we want. We know where the opportunity is. And some opportunities are way better than others. So one of the first things I did is I switched my target market. Instead mm -hmm. of, um, well, this is a this is a story I should probably share. My farm area, my target market when I began happened to be the area where I got my first listing just because I got my first listing there. Um, then I did a bit of research and I realized just a couple miles away, there was a way better area where the houses sold for about 30% more. There were more sales, um, less competition. By just switching my target market, I made 25, 30% more commission without having to sell any more houses. Ah, got it. So we got to know our best who. Uh, we teach how to do this research. Um, what is your, your best opportunities? I'm talking price range, neighborhoods. Uh, there's software that we use that um, interfaces with your MLS very quickly. You could find out uh, who your best target market is. Next question, what do they want? Well, you know, what we're taught in real estate school, well, everybody wants a real estate agent, right? So I need to, uh, 
uh, you know, get a glamour shot, get it airbrushed and, uh, <laughs> right. And, and say, you know, uh, call me. Um, so, uh, and those are the mistakes I made early on. I didn't understand effective marketing. Uh, marketing to me was, I, I lost a lot of money and, and got little in return. So you find your target market, your best target market. You offer what it is that buyers and sellers really want. And then you need an automated system where the leads come into you. So one of the things that we're doing right now that, that works well is, uh, is social media. Okay, so oh, nice. uh, okay. yeah, so we're generating leads on Facebook. We're driving through a lead ad page, which automatically captures the prospects, you know, in most cases, real phone number, because that's the phone number they've set their Facebook up account with. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one method. Uh, the leads come right to the agent's phone. We give them a script. We call it the universal callback script. Okay. Uh, those same ads can be run on Instagram. Okay. Uh, we can run them on uh, Twitter, but right now Facebook's working uh, the, the best for us. Still Craigslist. We can use, uh, we can use that as well. And don't forget direct mail. A lot of people, you know, they sniff at direct mail, but um, if you have direct mail that actually works, most people, you know, eventually they, they go to their mailbox. Um, right. Now, now with Facebook, we can retarget these prospects as well. So no matter, no, you know, no matter where the prospect goes, uh, they see you everywhere and you create this omnipresence because people are more likely going to do business with somebody they know. All right. So I have some questions there because you, mm -hmm. you dropped a, a, quite a few things there. Number one is when, when you have these Facebook lead ads coming through or, or from Instagram, what, what's the script that you're using? Cause you said you have a script. So what does that sound like? Cause a lot of people are scared to be like, well, they just visited my website through Facebook. What do I say? Right. Okay. So, uh, let me give you an example of an ad and then we'll do a quick role play and I'll show you how easy this is. Perfect. Okay. So, um, in your marketplace, I would go to MLS. You and I would have a conversation about, okay, um, what price range do you want? Like, uh, you know, Tristan, what do you really, who's your ideal buyer or seller? Tell me about your dream prospect. And we go into MLS and we find out, okay, that's where we're, that's where we're going to target. We're going to target that price range. Or we're going to target that neighborhood. So, I'll give you um, an example of a real ad that I ran that, that started to change my business. In my area, there's a golf course community called Glenway Estates. Um, only area, only, only neighborhood in, in town that has a, a golf course. These were in high demand. Um, I offered not a property, not one listing in Glenway Estates, but an entire list of homes in Glenway Estates. Now, I know they can get that anywhere, so I've got to make my list sound desirable. Yeah. So um, it might be this, this, let's say this area, all the homes are um, say over a million dollars, but there might be a couple of them are under a um, million dollars. So my uh, Facebook ad would say, um, Glenway Estate homes under $1 million or under $900,000. Um, list includes uh, price, address, and complete details, updated every five minutes. Someone clicks on that, what do we know? Uh, well, if they click on that, we've got their information. If they want to buy in Glenway Estates, they're going to have a house to sell. So I'm going to get a buyer and I'm going to get myself a listing. Now, let's say, Tristan, that you were one of those prospects that requested the list of Glenway Estates homes. Uh, I send you the list automatically. That lead comes to my phone. I call you up. Here's how easy the script is. Hi, may I speak to Tristan, please? Yeah, that's me. Hey, Tristan, it's Craig Proctor with ABC Realty. And the reason I was calling is I received your request for the homes in Glenway Estates. Uh, just wanted to let you know we've sent that information out to you. And I wondered if you were thinking about making a move. Uh, you know, I just, I just started browsing right now. You, you're at Which is what they all say, by the way. That's what they all say. You know, uh, Tristan, it's like when you and I walk into a retail store uh, and the salesperson says, hey, uh, can I help you? Uh, Knee-jerk response, well, I'm just looking, right? Yep. So a lot of prospects... Uh, they try to appear less motivated than they really are. Oh uh, yeah. So, so we're not bugged, right? Yeah. Right. So how do we cut through that? That's what the script is designed to do. So um, I said, um, you know, may I speak to Tristan? Hi, Tristan. It's Craig Proctor with ABC Realty. The mm -hmm. reason I'm calling, I'm making it clear is like you, you came to me first. The reason I'm calling is I'm responding to your request for the homes in Glenway States. Want to let you know, I've sent that information out. Are you thinking about making a move? So you responded pretty typically. I don't know. We're not sure. We're just thinking about it. Yeah. Well, if you were to move, uh, would you be staying local or moving out of the area? 
pretty close, probably like 15, 20 miles. Okay. And um, do you own a house now or are yeah. you renting? You, you own a house. Okay. And would you prefer to buy your next house before you sell your existing home? Or would you rather sell your existing house first? Um, probably sell and then buy. Okay. So now I know you're a sell first prospect because you just told me that. Yeah. So now I know not to waste time making you a buyer offer. I know to make you a seller offer. Right. Now, another question I want to ask is, do you have a realtor when the time is right? Because I want to know. So, um, and what was your answer to that, by the way? Do you have a realtor? Uh, no, I don't. I just okay. Started. So here, here's what we know about Tristan. We know he lives in the area. He owns a house. He's interested in the million dollar price range because he responded to the Glenway Estates ad. Okay. He wants to sell his house before he gets excited about another property and mm -hmm. he doesn't have an agent. How many of you watching this right now would say, I'd like to meet with Tristan. Yeah. Great. How do we get the prospects to meet with us though? It can't yeah. be like, um, Hey dude, I need some money. Um, uh, can I, can I come over to your house? <laughs> because by the way, that was my script when I, when I started in real estate. Of course it was, dude. You were yeah. the one who, who yeah, came it's, up it's, with these scripts. Yeah. So you, learned them. you know, it, it's like trial and error. I yeah. had no idea what to say to prospects in the beginning. <laughs> so, okay. So here's the lame offer that many agents would make to you, Tristan, as a seller. They'd say, Hey, Tristan, do you want to get a, uh, a free market evaluation on your home? Or we'll use terms the seller doesn't even understand. Would you like a CMA? So yeah. I, don't, I don't know what that is. I don't uh, but if, if your big offer to sellers today is, do you want to know what your house is worth? It's a lame offer. Yeah. You know, don't be surprised when the seller says, uh, you know, no thanks, I'm good. Or I, you know, I, I know what my house is worth. And they do with all the information they have today. Uh, quite often the seller knows more about what's going on in their street than, than we do. So your offer can't be that. Your, your offer cannot be, uh, hey, dude, do you want to know what your house is worth? Because they will say, no, I'm good. They'll decline mm -hmm. your offer and then you, you, know, you get nowhere. So here's how we spice this offer up for sellers. Um, so Tristan, would you like to know uh, what you're going to net in your pocket after all expenses if you were to sell your home. Also, I could give you some advice, some tips on what to do and what not to do to prepare your home for sale if you were to sell it. And uh, we could, uh, you know, you own a house and you want to buy another house. We could talk about timing and then answer any other questions that you have. Meeting, meeting with me is free of charge and no obligation. Would that interest you? Yeah, definitely. I'd like to know how much I would net. Yeah. So the net thing is different because they don't know that, right? Yeah. They know what their house is worth because, you know, they can just go on to Zillow and find out what the houses are selling for. Um, but they don't know all the associated expenses. Plus, the other part of the offer was, would you like to know inexpensive things to do to prepare your home to sell it for the most amount of money? Okay. Yeah. That requires a meeting, right? We can't okay. give them that kind of advice without looking at their home. And then, uh, you know, I spice it up a few other things like you're, you said you're selling and you're buying another home. So we could talk about how that's going to work because, you know, you, you've got one you got to sell, you got one you want to buy. We, we should talk about the timing. And then I can answer any of the other questions you have. It's absolutely free of charge and no obligation to meet with me. Uh, do you think that might be helpful? Definitely. If you, yeah, if they're thinking of selling, they say yes. Yeah. Now you can still blow it because if you've got a weak listing presentation, uh, which is another system. The listing presentation is a systemized way to go from point A, walking in the seller's house, to mm -hmm. point B, walking out of the seller's house with the signed listing agreement at the right price, the right commission rate, and for the right length of time. That requires systems. Yeah, dude, that's right. You got that. And part of the systems are the right scripts too. I, I like what you're doing. Yeah, you can generate the leads, you can make the appointment, uh, but if you don't have the presentation down, you are going to either lose the business to somebody else, or you're going to end up cutting your fee because they don't see value. You see, if right now, if, um, you're having, if you're having to be an arm twister at the end of your listing presentation, if you're met with all kinds of objections, it simply tells me your listing presentation isn't strong enough. So all of these systems can be learned by anybody. Um, and and that's, that's what we teach. We teach you how to go from the lead to how the hell do I reach people today? No one answers their phone. Um, let me share you a technique on that. Okay, so you reach all these leads on social media. You run these Facebook ads. Uh, you should have the right phone number, right? Because it's the cell number they used when they set up their uh, Facebook account. But people screen their calls. 
So um, I'm trying to reach you, Tristan. I call you. You don't recognize my phone number. You let it go to voicemail. Yeah. I call you back right away. Now curiosity's got to you, right? You might pick it up, right? Or you might not. You let it go to voicemail again. Now I text you. Hey, Tristan, you there? You're like, who is this? <laughs> it's, Craig. it's Craig. I'm calling you now. I call. Now you pick up. These are some of the techniques we can use and learn to, to better reach the prospects. And then be so good and confident on the phone that making the calls is something you want to do because good things happen, right? If, if um, you're not good on the phone, if you're spending hours calling back leads and you're consistently getting nowhere with everyone, well, of mm -hmm. course you don't want to make your calls. No. And, and a lot of agents don't, don't follow up. They're terrified of the phone. They don't know what to do and say. So, um, you know, I, uh, I learned how to reach the prospects, exactly what to say. And um, for most of my career, uh, just did a great job of booking appointments for other agents on my team. Got it. So you always went for the appointment. All right. So we've got ads on Facebook, ads on Craigslist. Then you started talking about mailers and how you retarget them on social. I love that through custom audience, probably. Yes. Um, yep. how, what does your mailer look like and, and how is it? having a strong call to action so people call you back? Uh, again, having the right offer. So um, uh, there's two types of mailers that we do. One would be branded. Okay, so Tristan, it would have a picture of you and we would be promoting um, either a unique service that you offer or some type of guarantee. Okay. Um, so as you probably know, one of the things that's worked really well for me was the guaranteed sale program. Mm -hmm. uh, or making a guarantee on some level. So my branded postcard would have a picture of me. It would, uh, you know, have my company logo on it, but it would have an offer. It would say, um, you know, your home sold uh, or I'll buy it. Uh, receive a free report that explains this offer. You don't have to talk to anybody if you don't want to, but my phone number would be there as well. So either call me directly or you can go to my website or call into a free recorded hotline and you can learn about how the program works. Um, if that one sounds too uh, risky, and it's really not, by the way, the guaranteed sale program, it's just math. If you understand math, you'll love that. Um, like when you trade in your car, uh, they have a guaranteed sale program, right? Uh, you yep. could sell your car yourself. You know you're going to get a little bit less for the car if you, if you let the dealership take it and trade. But for convenience sake, you're probably going to do that. But here's what the, deal, the car dealership does not do. They don't say, hey, Tristan, if we sell your home for more than, or we sell your car for more than what we gave you, we're not giving you the higher price. With our guaranteed sale program, that's exactly how it works, is we're not uh, wanting to buy the house. It's on the market for, let's say, 120 days. Um, our seller has the full benefit of getting full market value, but at the end of the 120 days, we will buy it at the pre-degreed price. So that, that type of performance guarantee is very powerful. If you think about all the iBuyer companies out yeah. there today, we're worried about Open Door and Zillow and what they're doing. The guaranteed sale program is way better than any of those iBuyer guarantees because of what I just said, because the seller with our program always gets the benefit of the highest offer, either from an outside buyer or at the end of the 120 days, our written guarantee. Um, so that would be a branded postcard. Then uh, the other uh, type of mailers that we send out would be less branded. So it would have your name and your company name as small as legally possible. So in California, for example, you know, your name, your, um, your name is not supposed to be bigger than the company name. You've got to have your, your California license number there, sales rep broker, all that's there, but that's not the focus of the mailing. The focus of the mailing uh, with a less branded campaign might be, um, you know, receive an online home evaluation or an area home sales report we're, we're, um, we're going to send you uh, all the recent home sales and all the homes on the market that match your criteria. Got it. So more generic. And you find, I find some of those on um, Corefact. I don't know if you've seen Corefact has a couple of no. those. For you. Uh, yeah, the, the, uh, the less branded uh, marketing actually generates more leads than the branded. Uh, but the branded ones are a little better quality because at least like they know you're calling you, right? They, they right. know, hey, it's Tristan and I'm calling. So and, alternate? I do alternate. Okay. Exactly. Uh, so one week we might send branded, the next week less branded. All right, cool. All right. So we've got the initial steps to creating a lead source, right? So you can start scaling. Now, how would scaling look like? Let's say I chose 
Facebook, Facebook ads, Instagram, Craigslist, and mailers as my way of growing my business. What's next? How do I expand this into a multi-million dollar scalability? Well, one great thing is you could have uh, offices potentially all over the country. You know, uh, so um, I, I told you before we got started, I have a house in Toronto, but I have another house in Florida. I was doing a seminar in Florida. And the point I wanted to make to the realtors I was meeting with is um, like this week, I'm sitting in Toronto, but I'm going to generate more leads in Sarasota, Florida than any of you guys are able to do. <laughs> well, I'm sitting in Toronto, right? So the lead generation can happen anywhere. So, uh, I mean, the ultimate scaling is we're seeing some of my clients now, um, they're, they're into uh, setting up uh, their enterprise in many different areas. There's, yeah. there's no limit to this. All right. So let's say I now say, wow, this is working really well here in LA. And now I want to go to a different part of the country, but I don't want to pour in a ton of money how would you say I begin to scale without having to spend a lot? Well, Facebook is one of the least expensive ways to generate leads. Um, uh, I can do, I can generate a lot of leads for about $10 a day. Uh, when I was running these ads in Toronto and in Sarasota, uh, by the way, they're the exact same ads, except for the ones in Toronto said Toronto, the other one said Sarasota. So we've got these templated out. We figured out, you know, kind of how to crack the code and find out what it is that people really want. Uh, so it's completely duplicatable and uh, uh, we can run as many of these as we want. $10 a day is a good budget. Um, that's pretty inexpensive. I mean, you could go into Craigslist for free. You can, you can post there. Craigslist will not allow you to use a live link anymore. When they removed that several years ago, that kind of killed it a bit for Craigslist. But what you could put in, if you want a non-threatening way for prospects to get information, is a recorded hotline number. Yeah. So many of our clients are doing that. Um, so uh, Craigslist, Facebook, um, direct mail. I mean, I, again, I'm, I'm just the, some of the, qual the, the quality of leads we get from direct mail is really, really good. Not as many as we get uh, leads as we get on Facebook, but uh, they're very good quality leads if you do direct mail properly. All right. So with your program, the Quantum Lead Program, do you show exact examples so we can just download and then just copy paste? Yeah, so I have these three-day conferences uh, that we uh, conduct um, all over the country. And when I say three days, I'm talking, Tristan, we go from 8.30 in the morning until 8.30 at night. You're crazy. I, I am crazy. And, and I do 90% of the talking. Oh, uh, so yeah. it is, yeah, like I am, uh, when these are done, I am, uh, I am uh, on the couch for a week. I'm, I'm done. Uh, but wow. I put everything into these things and we walk everybody through this systematic way of, of doing these. Um, When's doing your next big three-day event? Uh, I'm so glad you asked. It just happens to be one week today, uh, November 15th, 16th, and 17th. 15th. It is in Anaheim, California, and you can get information on my website at craigproctor.com and, mm -hmm. uh, or call my office. I'll tell you what, if you call my office, I will give you special pricing on that. Mention that you were on uh, Lab Code Agents, you are watching this, and we will give you a special price. What's the number so I can post it up right after? It is toll free 1 800 538 1034. We will give you a better price than going through the website if you call now 1 800 538 1034. All right, so what I'll do, Craig, is I'll put it up. I'll download the video, I'll repost it up, we'll do a Facebook watch party, and then I'll, I'll leave it up through the weekend. So perfect. We can do that too. Yeah. So now. You've got the examples of the ads you run. You're going to do Facebook, Craigslist, mailers. We're going to scale it by picking the right cities that we want to grow in because we can duplicate it uh, being very inexpensive, right? Now, after we've, we've decided to scale this, I need a staff. So how would my staff look if I want to be a multi-million dollar team? Well, you know, it's a great question. A lot of people think, uh, well, is, is Craig suggesting, you know, I run it and uh, hire a bunch of people? Not at all. Uh, you very slowly do this, you know, hire slowly, fire quickly. So um, you're, you, I'm not suggesting that you hire anybody until you max yourself out. Okay. And what That's do you what mean I, by that? Um, you, you're just not prepared to work any harder, whatever that is for you. Got it. For some of you, it's, you know, it's 40 hours a week. Some of you, it's 70 hours a week, but you've got your, you know, your perfect week. Do not let real estate 
um, shut out all the light in your life. I see so many real estate agents become a slave to their business. You know, they're making a lot of money, but they're trading their entire lifestyle for their business and that you will regret. So um, when you get to that point where, I don't know if, you know, your spouse isn't seeing you anymore, you're not seeing your kids, you're giving <laughs> up your hobbies, um, you're, you're, uh, you don't have time to have a proper meal because you, you have to drive through McDonald's. Uh, you, you know, when you get to that point where you've, you've got um, just no time left, um, you, you've, got to, you've got to expand. And the first person to hire is an administrative person. Okay. Not a licensed agent, an administrative person. And you're going to um, delegate anything that doesn't require a real estate license. So, um, you know, at one time I thought I was the only one, Tristan, that could get a key cut. I thought I was the only one that could take a picture of a house. I was the <laughs> only one, you know, to, 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 uh, who could create these free feature sheets. All of the, so much of what we do can be delegated. Um, you know, I got to the point where I even delegated the offers on my listings. And, and so, you know, the problem is, is we look around at what everyone else is doing, believing it's the thing to do, but uh, you're going to start gradually delegating some of the things that you do and you will have freedom. You will delegate, uh, you can delegate pretty much all you do uh, to the degree that you want to. You know, and mm -hmm. I hear some people say, well, you know, I really don't want to have a big team. And I'm like, well, have you ever done it before? No. Well, how do you know you don't like it? Sure. Or, or, or I'll hear agents say, I, I really don't want to make a million dollars a year. I'm like, well, have you ever made a million dollars a year? No. How do you, how do you know you won't like it? <laughs> um, what they, and, and here's the thing. If you're killing yourself doing whatever you're doing now, 400, 500, $600,000 a year, if you're killing yourself now, you might be thinking, you know, doubling up my income, going to a million dollars, that would mean divorce. That would mean health problems. That would mean I'll never see my kids. And you know what? Maybe you're right. Doing it the way you're doing it right now, that probably may be the case. You just got to figure out a better way to do it. I agree, man. I agree. All right. So we've got an admin person because I don't want to slave away and I want to see my kids and family. I want to be able to eat healthy, right? I've got an admin now. Now what do I hire next as I'm scaling? Um, a licensed agent. The licensed agent, uh, maybe delegate the buyers first. All right. So hire a licensed agent. Then I delegate those buyer leads I'm getting from Facebook, Craigslist, right. Instagram. Uh, and then would you suggest that I then hire another one after that one or go a different route? Well, wait till that agent's maxed out. And, and what would you, you say they look like if they're maxed out? Uh, well, they'll come to you usually complaining, like I, I, you know, they'll they'll stop being efficient. You'll notice that they're not being as as productive. Um, like uh, Lindy Black, who I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. about a year into this, you know, she's walking in my office. She goes, uh, "I need an assistant. Like I can't do all this." <laughs> I love that. And uh, I I think it's just uh, you know an individual thing. Okay, makes sense. All right, sorry, I'm, I'm losing my voice today. No problem, dude. I always get sick before these conferences for some reason, but. Well, you, got, you have a week to get better. <laughs> I got a week to get better. <laughs> so, yeah. all right. Admin, buyer's agents, maybe multiple ones, depending on where you're at. And then what's next? Do I hire a, a listing coordinator, a listing agent? What do I, an ISA? What's next? Yeah, it just depends on how big you want to grow this. But that's the, the pathway is you hire an admin first, then you're going to hire one licensed agent. And. If your lead generation is working as well as I'm suggesting, you mm -hmm. will get to the point where even doing that, uh, even hiring an admin person and one or two licensed agents, you, you will not be able to keep up with the lead flow. So your choice is either turn this off or recruit more people. Got it. All right. So, mm -hmm. so recruit, let's say we keep on recruiting people, add more buyer's agent. At what point, Craig, do I add an ISA or do we not add ISAs? Do we outsource that? You'll find when you give the leads to the agents, uh, the agents uh, really don't want to call leads. Like great outside sales agents want to go to appointments. They, they want appointments, not leads. Yeah. So uh, I, you know, I, I mentioned Lindy Black. I would, if I gave her 10 leads, she was so good on the phone uh, that she would book an appointment, uh, you know, in the first two or three phone calls and the other seven leads wouldn't, get a phone call. Uh, Lindy wanted to go face to face and work with buyers and sellers. So there's agents like that. I had to find the guy 
that was the telemarketer. Let him throw the headset on, let him make the calls. All right, perfect. I love that. And then do you separate your team or the structure that you have as a team with a listing coordinator and a closing coordinator and all that or? Yes. Uh, yeah. So you're, you're going to grow out, you're going to grow out this team. We call it an organizational chart and a great book for everyone to read is the E-Myth by Michael Gerber. Okay. The E-Myth stands for the entrepreneur myth. Okay. The entrepreneurial myth. And the myth is, that we believe that people that get into business on their own are entrepreneurs and Gerber says, no, it's not true. There are simply technicians suffering from an entrepreneurial seizure. So, <laughs> so the, the problem is, is when you get into real estate, if you're good at real estate, you're good with buyers and sellers, that's how you choose to spend your time. But if you think about it, all you've created for yourself is a job. Most real estate agents have a job. They don't have a business. A true business works without you. So that's, that's the litmus test is can your business work without you? And how many homes could you sell if your business had nothing to do with you? It's limitless. Yeah, it is. I think that when you start asking those questions, you start shifting your mindset to be able to allow you to be able to scale to a larger, a larger degree. Yeah, when you start thinking, okay, how can I make this work without me? Like if I, if I couldn't work, how could I get the people and the systems around me to do all the heavy lifting? And that's, that's all I did. And that's all I teach agents to do is, is um, you know, grow your business to as big or small as you desire. I have a lot of my members that, um, you know, they, it's a husband and wife team and they're totally content making a half a million dollars a year. Mm -hmm. But then I have people like Sarah Reynolds, number one KW agent in the world, and she's going to do about seven or eight million dollars in GCI this year. And she doesn't work for money. She gives a lot of it away. Wow. Yeah. Well, dude, she's awesome. I know she's right now. She's at that Gary Keller private event. Yep. And um, I know Gary always has some really nice things to say about you. So that's. Yeah, that's I appreciate that. No, he's. He's, um, he was always been a great supporter. I've, um, when I was a Remax guy, Gary was inviting me, when I was top Remax agent in the world, he's inviting me to go to family reunion and the mega agent camp. So I always thought that was cool. And uh, he would stand on stage in front of whatever 15,000 people and say, you know, um, you know, Craig's with our competitor, he's with the enemy, but uh, we want to bring in the very best people to talk to you, regardless of what brand they're with. Yeah. So, um, you know, uh, very few people would do that. And, uh, you know, Gary and I became good friends. Dude, I, I love that, man. Well, here's what we got so far. I'm going to break it down because I, I have a, one last question for you that kind of brings it together. So, so far we've talked about the steps necessary to start lead generating and growing, right? And that's number one. We've talked about scaling, picking the right area, seeing if you want to expand outside of your area or even close by. And then we talked a little bit about the staff needed to help you with the scaling and reaching a million dollars. Lastly, dude, what do I do with all this money when I start making it? <laughs> uh, well, uh, you could, uh, you could uh, give some of it away to something that's important to you. Uh, you could travel uh, because if you have this business that I'm describing that doesn't, you know, doesn't depend on you being there all the time, how about living your life? How about doing all the things that you really, really want to do? You know, I was reading something from, uh, I think it was a minister that was giving last rites to people. And he was talking, you know, people were wanting to know, like, what did people say on their deathbeds? And he says, well, they don't really regret what they did in their life. Uh, what they regret is the things that they didn't do in their lives. And so, um, you know, I always, whenever we lose somebody that we love, it shakes us to our core because yeah. we're reminded of our own mortality, right? We're reminded, like, we're not here forever. And that's the biggest gift I can give to real estate agents. Uh, people think it's the money and um, it's, you know, what you can do with the money. It's, you, you have to have the time and the money. That's the true freedom to me. So I help agents have, have more money, but more freedom so they can do what I believe I call it their heart's desire. There's things that you really are passionate about. And most people never get to do those things because they're a slave to their real estate business. 
And um, that's what I'd like to, to leave everyone with is that thought that, um, you know, what would I really like to do with my life? How can I set this real estate business up? So my real estate business serves my life instead mm -hmm. of me being a slave to it. Yeah, and I think most real estate agents are a slave to the business, man. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, see, I see broken marriages. I see people that give up their health to it. Uh, they don't see their children, um, you know, and had I not figured this out, I mean, that was my life. So I totally get it. Um, because I've been in this real estate industry for 25 years uh, and, and been an active agent for, for much of that, um, you know, I've been in the trenches. I know what it's like to, uh, to be broke. I know what it's like to all of a sudden find success, but work all the time and give your life up to it. And I also know how, um, how it's like to make a lot of money without working hard. And I got to say, uh, the latter was a lot more fun. <laughs> I hope so, dude. Yeah. I love that. That's so funny. All right, question here. With your event happening November 15, 16, 17 in Anaheim, if I were to send like part of my team, would they, how would they benefit in comparison to a single agent or a team leader? Um, do you have ever, something for everybody or how does that look? Yeah, like if you were to bring your outside sales agents, uh, we would teach them things that are relevant to them. Uh, so uh, we, would, uh, we would teach them the listing presentation system, the buyer presentation system. If you brought your inside sales agents, we would work on the scripting, on that universal callback script. How do I reach the prospects? What do I say? There's only about seven or eight big objections that we actually hear on the phone. The question is, is if you knew how to handle those objections, would you be more well prepared for these phone calls, more confident on the phone? And the answer is, of course. So um, what we teach is beneficial to everyone uh, on your team, whether you're the team leader or whether you're an inside sales agent, outside sales agent, or even an administrative person. I love it, dude. All right. So questions about that, go to craigproctor.com and I'm going to post up the phone number, but it's 1-800-538-1034. He has a special discount for lab code agents as well. So just mention that you heard it in lab codes and Craig, dude, uh, like I said before, you are a living legend. I, I consider you to be like uh, Gary Keller in the, in the real estate world uh, and other people like that. So very few and thank you. God, that you're still alive, so I can pick still, brain. still alive. We haven't had any of those Craig dude. Proctor's dead rumors yet. Yeah, so no, no dead still, rumors. Dude. Still alive. Hey, and, and folks, you can like me on Facebook as well. Um, uh, I'm at uh, Craig Proctor Seminars, okay, on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, so like our page, and I'm trying to do these Facebook Live uh, videos uh, on a more regular basis where we're interviewing uh, some of our, our top members all over the country. And that's one thing we also forgot to talk about is how we're using Facebook Live to, uh, to generate leads, yeah, which is absolutely can do, free. Can we do that uh, the next round, maybe this early December? Yeah, I mean, uh, let, me, let me give you a quick, just a quick preview on how that works. Sure. So um, let's say I have a free report on the seven biggest mistakes that Los Angeles home sellers make when selling their home. Okay. So I am going to grab here. This is off the cuff. I'm going to say, um, I'm going to say, uh, hi, everybody. This is Facebook Live. Hi, everyone. This is Craig Proctor, ABC Realty. Hey, uh, I got this really cool new report on my desk today on the seven biggest mistakes that Los Angeles home sellers make and how to avoid them. Now, mistake number one is this. And mistake number two is this. If you'd like to know about all seven mistakes, uh, just message me um, or uh, you can uh, call my office or visit my website at. So we're using information, uh, we're doing Facebook Live, which Facebook loves, you get really good at this, well, you know how to do it, because you've got, you know more than me about this, because you've got 100,000 followers on your page, and I've got about 10,000. So maybe I should be coming to your Yeah, but your, I, I, learned, I learned from you, dude, you know that. So. Well, we're, we're always learning from each you other. Set the, you set that table, and I just came up yeah. to it, I'm like, I like this table. Yeah, yeah, it's a fun table. Uh, well, look, uh, this was great today. I really appreciate you having me on. I'd like to, I'd like to do more with uh, you if, uh, if you, you're open to that. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And guys, go to craigproctor.com and sign up for that event or an event close to you. Thank you, Craig. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, thank you. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thanks.